Hello, friends. Welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 25. This is December 3rd, 2021. I'm Emily Williams, and I'm in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where we are experiencing the most beautiful spring weather. Oh, wait, it's December. Yes, today the high is around 72. Let me just, might be able to tell what the temperature is by looking at my watch, 73. 73 degrees, sunny, just the most gorgeous spring day. Actually, let's call it a summer day. But Chapel Hill, North Carolina is in the Northern Hemisphere, so December is late autumn. In just a couple weeks, we will pass the winter solstice and it'll be Christmas then, soon after that. Anyway, here I am. Uh, this is a floss tube, meaning cross-stitch related items. Variety show, meaning a lot of other things. I do have quite a variety of variety show items today, including some cross-stitch, so hmm, kind of mixed up. But anyway, I'm glad you're joining me today. I hope you find something interesting. Let me start with cross-stitch. Now, I have not for the past several videos shown you temperature tree, because I hadn't updated it, but I have now updated it through the end of December. So this is the cover sheet for it. It's a down, I got the downloadable PDF from Stitch and Mommy uh, Etsy shop. And here it is. And as I've said before, the idea is that the trunk and branches represent the year and the leaves represent the individual days. So this branch is November. And November is finished. I didn't do December yet, um, but I finished it up the, the other day through the end of November. And you can see that we're into the darker colors. You know, the darker colors in my color scheme are colder temperatures, like over here in January and February. So we're into some of that, but occasionally we have the brighter, um, more warm days. And these first couple days in December are gonna be those warmer um, orange, colors as well. I don't think we'll get back into yellow unless we have a really unusual uh, time, which I will say we did have a few years ago, maybe 19 or so years ago. We had such a warm spell in the early part of December that some of our irises bloomed and we had people over for dinner and I cut irises from our yard and made a bouquet for the table. It was pretty unusual that year. But that's temperature tree. I will, you know, stitch. Ideally, I stitch on it every week and do seven leaves. We'll see though. Just one more month of this year. That's crazy also. I'll also show you um, ornament. This is also from an Etsy shop. The uh, designer's name is Zephyr Mood or the shop's name is Zephyr Mood. Last time I, which was two weeks ago, I had just finished this big one and I was starting to work over here. And you can see my progress now. I am so close to finishing this. That's really unbelievable. I figured I would not finish it until March, but thanks to the semi-sane stitchers dodgeball game, I have spent a lot of time stitching recently and used this a lot. So I've made a lot of progress and it's, I really like it. It's beautiful. It's has mostly symmetrical designs in it. So it's quite nice and it's blue. That's always good. And I'll also show you Talavera. Um, you can see as of December 1st, the new, the last part of the design came out, which are these two pendant hearts and this heart in the middle. And I will say that when I first saw this, the design, I thought, I'm not sure I like that. It just looks so heavy compared to the rest of the um, elements of the design. And I was thinking, well, I could do some alternative way of finishing this off instead of doing that. But one of the advantages of being part of the Facebook group that's related to this project is that many people are diving right in and um, 
doing it. I haven't done anything really. I've finished the border since the last time, but it's ready for that now. I mean, there's this little gap right in here, right there. That's not complete. And there's a little bit not complete in that orange diamond shaped uh, part down below there. Because I was waiting, I thought, oh, I'll just wait and see exactly what that center thing is. So we'll see. I, in watching what other people have done and posted on Facebook, I am getting some ideas of how to lighten it up and make it more in keeping. It does make me wonder what the original designer imagined it would be. It's charted as all one color. You know, there's no differentiation and each person who's stitching it is making their own decisions. And I have not seen anybody post their pictures on Facebook who've just done it in one color. So everybody's doing something about it and I'm using, I think seven or eight different colors. Um, so we'll see what I decide to do. I might get to that this week. I do, I printed out the patterns. I tend to print them out and just flash it for a moment. And I use my colored pencils to sort of sketch out what I want to do. Um, so I did print it out, I got that far. We'll see if I get to the point where I feel that I can actually start stitching. It's a lot of stitches in this section too, and some uh, of the gridded straight stitch part as well. So anyway, so that's the cross stitch I'm gonna to show today that I've been working on, I should say, because I'm gonna show one other cross stitch item and a couple of other handwork items that are related to our Christmas decorating in just a moment. But first, uh, a few weeks ago, I showed you the Jenny's Christmas box, Jenny Doan of Missouri Quilt Company, and I said I would show you what came in that, and so I will. So up on the mantle behind me, right, right behind Alexa, right there is a little snow globe that has their logo um, yellow ducky thing in it. It's cute, very cute. And uh, I don't actually have a snow globe, so that is my snow globe now. And we'll put it away when we put away the Christmas decorations. And next year I'll get it out and say, oh look, I remember, that was fun. And I wanted to, so that came in a little box and I wanted to show you the packaging of most of the things are in these paper bags and they're labeled with the day. So that was day one, December 1st. This is December 2nd, this is December 3rd. I should say, if you got this box and you are behind in opening it, you might wanna skip ahead a minute or two. So day two was a charm pack of this particular group of fabric, which interestingly, I have some of this collection upstairs in my sewing room, because I liked it. It's um, sort of, I don't know how to show it. It's mild colors, you know, not intense, not highly uh, in saturated colors, but very nice, a sort of cream, cream background. And uh, there's some hem tune titles that go with it uh, as little panels, which if I make a quilt out of them, I'll show it. But this is called Songbook and it's a Moda fabric. And then day three was this pattern for making a set of pillows out of charm squares. And the ones on the cover are made from this set, this particular set, and they included the covered button thing to make the buttons that you can put on the middle of the pillows as a little accent. So that's, that's cute. So that was days one, two, and three. One was the snow globe, two was the charm pack, and three was the pattern to use the charm pack. And I kind of imagine that that's how the box will go along, that there will be some elements that go together to make a particular project. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the future days hold. And as I said, when I first showed you the box, I intend to open things, I'm gonna be Try to be very self-controlled and open each thing on its day. 
And then when I make a video, I will show you. So if you've hidden your eyes because you didn't want to see that, you can open your eyes again. Of course, you might have also muted this and you can't hear me. There. Ha! Huh. Funny. I'm so hilarious. So I think, I can't remember if I showed this way back early in my videos, but this is like one of our Christmas ornaments that I made last year. It's wool felt and it's applique and I cut out the little pieces and I did the little French knots and the little embroidered nose and uh, these little flowers. And this was very fun. I had two kits that I had bought, which I'll put the information about the kits in the um, description box in case you want to get them because they are still available. I had bought them at the quilt show vendor area in 2020 or 19. I don't remember which year. And the year of 2020 was a lot of Zoom meetings and Zoom things where if I was not required to be taking notes or to be actively preparing to present something, I had a lot of handwork going. So I made a lot of ornaments of those kits. So that was just one. I just pulled it off the tree. Um, I'll put some pictures up here of our Christmas decorations. We typically put up our Christmas decorations the weekend after Thanksgiving. And normally that is also, or often, that is the weekend of the first Sunday of Advent. And what we like to do is to have our house decorated for Christmas from the first Sunday of Advent through Epiphany, which is January 6th. So it encompasses the Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Advent, as we prepare for the birth of Christ, his birth, and then Epiphany, which celebrates the coming of the Magi, the wise men. Uh, and all of and Epiphany means light. Uh, that's when the star shone, and so we we have our house lit with Christmas lights through that evening, and then we don't light after. E now, if the weather's bad, we might not take the outside lights down actually, but we won't light them after Epiphany. And I'll say that I really miss the light by that point because I love the I love Christmas lights and. There are Christmas trees in sort of a dark corner of our living room, so when it is present, that corner is lit. And I'm gonna show you now a picture of the cut glass vase, which is one of the things that I inherited from my mother that was part of her mother. Her grandparents possibly owned it. It's a lovely vase. And in that, I put lights. Um, every year and we have some uh a couple of a santa claus and two nutcrackers from germany that friends gave us that we really really love uh the santa is a smoking santa and the santa um has a little incense pan that you can put a little cone of incense in there and then the smoke comes out his mouth so it looks like he's smoking very clever and some other things that I might have taken pictures of, which I can show you, which I'll just put up here. And now I'll move on and hopefully the pictures are over. Anyway, also I made my daughter-in-law a stocking a few years ago. And this is silk from China. And this is satin that my mother's wedding dress was made from. She made her own wedding dress and I um, I got some of the scraps from it and I made this for my daughter-in-law. So that is her stocking. It's very shiny, very shiny. Yes, those are butterflies. A very Christmassy theme, right? But it's the right colors. And back when Byron and I first got married, I, there's a date stitched into this somewhere, I think. I cross-stitched this stocking for him. It took me a long time. Now this was, I don't think I had it for him the first year that we were married. It might've been the second year. 
So I might have finished it in 1983. We've been, we were married in 1982. But I had a lot of fun with this. I especially like the French knots for the, um, the cranberries that are strung up there. That apple that has a bite out of it is funny. I think it's a really nice uh, design. And of course, it's from its era. This uh, colonial blue and the rose color, that's very much from the 80s. But it's still a lovely stocking. So interestingly, in our house, we have a lovely stocking for Scott, for Byron. We have a lovely stocking for our daughter-in-law and our friend Anne, who comes most Christmases, and I, and Scott, our son, have stockings bought from Walmart. Hopefully, I'm gonna make some stockings for Anne and Scott. I don't know if I'll get around to making myself one, but I would like to think that our special people would all have special stockings. But you know, it doesn't matter. Those fuzzy, you know, they're fuzzy with the fuzzy white cuff and the nice fuzzy red fleecy kind of stocking part. They, they look right, they're what we've used, they function as stockings. And if they were never replaced with special stockings, it would be fine. It would be fine because that's not really the point. Oh, and I'll, I'll just lean over a little bit here. You can see our crush is up on the mantle behind me. That my mother bought in Italy back in 1950 or so. She graduated from college in 1950 and I think she went to Europe with a friend and spent some time touring around Europe. I think that's what people did. It's possible she took a ship to get there. I'm not sure that she flew. I don't know. It's funny, I don't know how she got there. But she was in Europe and she bought that in, in Italy. The manger and the, or the little stable, wooden stable, which is hand painted. And the little figurines are plaster. And years ago, Joseph was broken. I mean, before I was born, Joseph got broken. So sitting in there with Mary, is one of the shepherds, which all through my childhood, I thought that was Joseph. And I thought, isn't that funny that Joseph has a shepherd's crook? I wonder why. But it never occurred to me that it's because that wasn't Joseph. I probably could come up with another Joseph, even possibly a painted plaster of Paris Joseph that would match that set. But the shepherd is fine. I think he's doing I think he's doing a good job. I think we'll, we'll let him keep his job at least for this year. And then finally, I, you know, I have this feeling that earlier in my, in the videos, I might've shown this, but this is a quilt, which is Christmas cactus. And I made this little, it's a made by foundation paper piecing, which is why the corners are so pristine. And I did it by hand, by hand, sewed it and I machine quilted it and I may have actually put the blocks together by machine possibly, but I really love this. And I made this particular one for my mother-in-law and then when she died, it came back to me. I'm so happy to have it and I have not hung it up yet. I'm going to right after this video, it goes right next to the fireplace there. It replaces the pineapple that I'm pretty sure I did show in a previous video that my friend Cindy made me. I made another one of these for Cindy, actually, so she has one that's almost identical to this, but I really, really like this. I love Christmas cactuses, and I'm going to show some pictures of ours and our, because I have had two for quite a while, a number of years, and a couple of years ago, friends of ours were going to be in Germany for three or four years. And so the man had one that he had had for about 20 years. He said, would I take care of it? Since I have some, I know how to take care of them. Would I take care of it while they were gone? So I did. He said, it's never bloomed or hardly ever bloomed. 
Well, that first year it was here in my house, it went crazy with blooms and it goes crazy at least twice during the winter months every year. This year it started going crazy at Halloween. Now mine don't bloom that early usually. Um, and one of them is kind of sickly, so I'm not sure what its story is. I don't know what, I mean, it's putting out some blooms this year, but it is not in the best of health. And I have another one that is here on visiting, it's visiting the Christmas Cactus Hotel for a few months in hopes that it will get some robustness and perhaps bloom. And I noticed just the other day that there are two buds on it. Now, one thing that you may not know about Christmas cactuses is that once they start to put out their buds, you should not rotate them or move them at all because their buds are too stiff. They want to, the buds come out on the light side, the side where the light comes from, and they want to face the light, but they're too stiff to bend if you rotate it to face the light and they fall off. So we have a cleaning service that comes every other week and once those start to set their buds, I send a picture of them to the supervisor and say, please tell the ladies, they call themselves the ladies, that's not me being condescending. Please tell the ladies that it's time to stop, no more touching of the Christmas cactuses. Please don't touch them or move them. And they are very reliable to not touch them or move them. So we have a great crop of Christmas cactus blossoms every year. I attribute it to where they are in the window, not to anything special that I do. So that is what I wanted to talk about today. I hope you found something of interest. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope that uh, your own Christmas season is shaping up to be a happy one. I hope that perhaps unlike last year, you'll be able to be together with some family. I hope that people will be wise and sensible about their activities and try very hard to not pass illnesses, whether it's COVID-19 or any other illness around from person to person. Uh, and we are planning to be pretty quiet and careful here. We're going to have a guest, which I will actually spend a moment talking about upcoming schedule. I plan to make a video next week. After that, I may not make one until sometime in January. So uh, this week I will be doing a lot of cross stitch, so the floss tube part will still apply. Once we get beyond around the 11th or 12th of December, I get much busier with holiday things normally. So I'm not probably going to do much cross stitch, if any, and I won't make a video. There, I won't really have time to do it. So this is probably it. No, 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 no. One more and then the new year. You'll see one in 2022. So I will see you next week. I hope you have a great week. Many blessings to you, friends.